Yeah, as I talked about before, I mean, you play so many people who are just ladder warriors, and all they do is ladder. They don't play many private games. So they see these very standard builds. They see people mimicking the pros, so they know how to hold off a two racks. They know how to hold off a four gate. But if you come at them with plus one zealous and void rays, nobody does that. So they don't have practice to defend against it, even if it's scouted. So I think time being very smart here, using basically custom builds that he's practiced and really worked out the timings for, and it makes for a very entertaining and successful series of games. Yeah, so Cry, the Terran player, spawning over here on the south side of the map. Meanwhile, we have Time spawning on the top left-hand side of the map as the blue Protoss. Both of the players trying to confuse us a little bit more and choosing very similar colors, but luckily this is not a mirror match here in the Zonaga Caverns. And I'm interested to see what Mcry is going to go for. And um, what we've seen from VP so far are pretty standard builds, like you mentioned. We may go for a Supply Depot, Barracks, maybe a maybe a Reaper expand here on the Zelnago Caverns, as the Reaper able to get so much movement, able to shut down the early Zealot, also able to snipe off an early Sentry if the Sentry is trained before a Stalker, and we'll see whether or not that really works out for him. Yeah, Cry sort of the opposite of time. Looking at his ladder record, he only has about 70 games played, a very strong win percentage, almost 70%. So a successful ladder in his own right, but just not the same amount of games. Instead, he's got quite a few custom games. So, you know, players in, uh, use different strategies and how they practice and prepare. So I imagine uh, Cry playing a lot with teammates and practicing that way. Time instead just sort of playing against the masses. And we'll see whether Cry uh, is able to handle time. None of his teammates have been able to so far. Yeah, so taking a look into time space right now, time pretty much looking like a standard Protoss, going for that gateway pylon and that assimilator there. Meanwhile, taking a look at Cry, Cry looking like the standard Terran, um, pretty much going for that barracks, going for the refinery. Uh, we may be seeing a Marine being trained up in just a moment and by Cry, and then off of that, we should either see a Hellions or um, Hellions Marine Tank. Both of those are very viable options as an SCV hiding out. And now is he going to, no, just get a patrol over there. I thought for a moment he's going to try to go for a proxy, proxy building of some sort and then start a little bit of a rush. Yeah, he might just be delaying, uh, actually it will be a proxy rack, so we're going to have a two racks pressure here. He's getting up a tech lab in the uh, barracks in his main, so I imagine he may be going for uh, maybe a timing with the concussive shells and marauders out of that one barracks in his main, and then streaming in marines as well. Uh, out of the natural of time and time if he does open with like a one gate expand if he just scouts the one racks that uh, vp cry has he might be in trouble here just lack of units yeah so he's gonna come in here there is gonna be a marauder the marauder should be getting concussive shells in just a moment the probe needs to come up that ramp he needs to get a good look at what's happening inside as the additional supply depot should be an indicator that something is going on the probe now trying to make its way in unable to do so the marauder doesn't have the concussive shell so the probe will be able to return home. But taking a look at time right now, time moving out, rallying a stalker into his opponent's base, and that is going to be very, very dangerous. Yeah, I'd actually possibly let time into my base if I was cry at this point, just to see the barracks, just to see the, uh, the refinery. Though at this point, it's gotten a little bit later into the game, and not seeing too many more production facilities might make him a little bit uh, hesitant, but now we see time placing down that nexus, doing the one gate expand, as I, I said before. Uh, so he's going to be very risky here, taking this fast expansion. He does not know that a second Rax is in play, and these Marauders with Concussive Shell are now going to be streaming out here, and some SCVs coming as well. Time might be in trouble. Yeah, I think Time definitely going to be in trouble. He does have a second Gateway coming into play. The Warp Gate research about to be completed. Actually, about another 70 seconds or so. I forgot the additional uh, timing. And now three Marauders going to make their way up the ramp with no sentries. No sentries to try to stop this, and that Stalker going to get absolutely destroyed there. Down goes a Stalker. Another Stalker may get taken down. Yeah and time is in a bit of trouble you can see the low hit point marauders as long as those marauders are in the back of the group and um, no unit will be able to make its way out and now scv is leading the way trying to act as a little bit of a meat shield there's one sentry the sentry needed to be over there by the front door and i think a cry just with this very early marauder pressure going to get a lot of damage on time we are getting up to three gateways the nexus should be cancelled most likely in order to warp in additional units but i think the probes may actually be able to get enough damage off. I'm not sure. One sentry versus a marauder. This is not looking good. Not a good trade at all. The sentry down to 
four hit points. There it goes. In comes some stalkers, and this is just turning into a strange game. Yeah, Cry did not do a very nice job uh, reinforcing this. Just off the two racks, was not able to uh, get a lot of units out, and his macro fell quite a bit. He's up to 600 minerals, so it could expand behind this as well. But he's going to keep the pressure on Marauders coming out of both racks, and time allowed that Nexus to finish. So a very interesting decision. He does have up his warp gate tech. He's got three gates, so he's going to try to use these very small uh, numbers of units to defend his Nexus here. And without Stim, the Marauder is not going to be able to take down this Nexus too quickly. But time coming out with Stalkers. Stalkers very uh, weak against Marauders, but he really has no choice as the Zelts can be so easily kited. Yeah, the two Stalkers now against um, against the Marauder over here. The Probe should perhaps be trying to engage once more. It looks like another Marauder going to get taken down. Time really needs to use these Probes to try to get some damage onto that Marauder. They're already down to 30 hit points, and it looks like that one Marauder will get taken down as well. And now, finally, we see the Barracks has been lifted off. Time going to come over and take down the Tech Lab. And I, I think, really, if Cry was able to keep up his macro, he would be in a much better position. Um, it felt like he had the momentum for so long and now has lost it, as time will be able to just chrono boost and um, probes off of two Nexuses. Harvester count 25 for time. So, um, all this time, I thought time was um, behind, but no. I'm um, pulling the probes, the probes joining in on the battle, and now he has the economic lead as well. Yeah, and his expansion up is faster than... Uh... Then cries, and you're right, he's chronoing out uh, probes two at a time, so we will be able to take the economic advantage 29 to 22. And cry feeling a little bit vulnerable at this point, throwing up two bunkers. So those are bunkers that could be barracks at this point, and he's just now starting stim. And he's really not going to be able to push out against the army of time at this point without that stim. So time has some time here to. Uh, to macro up to add some more production facilities, add some gas, perhaps even tech up. But at the moment, he is just focusing on his economy, 33 to 24, and it's only going to get worse for Cry. Yeah, unless Cry tries to go for another command center to try to use the, the strategy that MMA used over at MLG, running two bases with three command centers, trying to just train up as many SCVs as possible. I can't imagine um, Cry really being able to claw his way back in. He needs to do something aggressive. He needs to do something smart, and I don't know exactly what that is at this stage, as um, him slipping on his macro early on just really hurt him. Yeah, now 28 to 37, so again, time is ahead, but I mean, let's not get too uh, out of control here saying that time is quite far ahead because, I mean, it's 63 to 54. Both players are in a position where they can't really push out, so it'll really come up to the decision-making and these next uh, four or five minutes to see what tech paths the players choose to go down, how they add upgrades as we see two forges being finished for time. So he knows that Bio is on the way. He's starting the 1-1 one -one upgrades for his gateway units. I imagine we'll see a Twilight Council soon as well, as he's going to want to try to make these Stalkers and Zealots as strong as possible. Just has the one sentry at the moment, so he won't be able to use a lot of force fields to try to control the action. Uh, I'd like to see him get out a few more sentries, but he really can't afford it uh, gas-wise if he is going to continue to tech. Yeah, Cry is moving out. He does have those Stim Marines. He does have Marauders. Um, the medevacs are nowhere to be found. The starport about to be completed. There is no reactor being built by the factory, and I spoke too soon. So we should be having um, a, a double medevacs coming out in just a moment. But Cry, he has to be very, very careful with this army. He cannot try to engage. He just needs to try to keep, um, keep time honest. And time now going into triple gateway play should be able to counterattack this if Cry overcommits. I actually think this might be a decent time for Cry to push in here. There aren't many force fields possible for time. He's basically only going to have, uh, say, three or four. So after one round of force fields, he's going to be able to do a ton of damage. As we see him pushing in here, he's going to uh, test the waters a little bit, stimming up. He's going to try to kite back. Two nice force fields, three, four force fields go up, trapping a lot of those units. And I may be wrong here, a guardian shield going up as well. But no, it looks like uh, Cry might be getting the better of this. Those force fields do go down. No more force fields possible for time. And Cry doing a ton of damage. These Stim Marines and Marauders are going to be very strong against these Stalkers. And again, in these small unit battles, the uh, the Barracks units do so well against Gateway units. Basically trading armies here with time. And I think that actually evens things up. It is uh, 51 to 42 Harvester-wise. But I think that time really can't push out here. His upgrade's just now finishing. We'll see if he goes for 2-2. Two, two. 
Yeah, he does have Zealot Charge, or Zealot Charge now currently being up upgraded as well. It looks like the Forges just finished 1-1. One, one. Like you mentioned, it doesn't look like the 2-2 two, two upgrades will be coming in anytime soon. And we'll see what time really tries to go for. Both players running off of two bases, and their main mineral patches should start to be running low. And I'm surprised that no one has tried to set up another expansion. No one has cleared out the rocks. And I always speak too soon as now time clearing out the gold mineral patch in the center of the map. Really would have liked to see Cry scrap those three bunkers as he pushed out there and get up another command center at that third and expand behind that strong push. He was able to trade armies there. Time was not going to be able to be very aggressive before his upgrades finished as we see him working on 2-2 and Zealot leg speed. So Cry really needed to take advantage of that army trade and get up a third because he was in position to do so. Yeah, we also finally see Cry getting the level 1 weapons upgrade on his infantry. And that's going to be also another one of those problems where Marines are very, very strong units um, if your opponent doesn't have armor. Marines do a lot of damage in small amounts, but when a Zealot has level 2 armor upgrades and Guardian Shield on top of that, against even a level 1 um, or a 1 upgraded Marine, I think the damage is at 3. So 3 damage per attack, not much to really talk about. And those Zealots with charge are going to be able to close in on that distance. Um, also, the Medivacs are still trying to be trained up, but we can see that he's currently supply locked at 110 and 110. And Medivacs are definitely needed. Only 2 in the field right now. Actually, the two are in the main base of time doing a drop there as it's going to do a ton of damage. Time was a little bit out of position trying to guard that third. He was drawn there by the small group of units of Cry, and Cry going to be focusing down these warp gates. One already down, a second falling, and Cry can just pick up and leave if he chooses at this point. It looks like he will be trading and possibly trying to take down the third, and it looks like a pick up there. For uh, Cry and one of the medevacs goes down, the other one does escape, not too many losses, and Cry forcing a cancel on that third from time. So a nice multi-prong attack there, and he's getting up his own third, going to be soon landing it at the gold, and I'm not sure that uh, time really has anything that can take on a planetary fortress at the gold at this point. Yeah, I think you're right. Cry at this point looks like he will be setting up a planetary fortress. The only thing that time has going for him is that he does have level 2 weapons upgrade and level 2 armor upgrades now being completed, now going into level 3. But without Colossus, without that extended thermal lance range, he's not going to be able to shut down a planetary fortress. Gateway units just absolutely melt to the splash damage, in addition to the fact that Marines and Marauders are also doing a lot of damage as well. A Marauder going to take down the proxy pylon over here by time. Time should know when another expansion is coming up, but Time is definitely in trouble. He needs to get up another base, or he just needs to ramp up his production and try to all in once more. Yeah, Time has a probe in the gold of Christ, so he sees that that base is going down, and now that is going to make him push out. He's going to have to take down that gold. Cry taking a defensive position here to try to defend the planetary fortress that just now finishes. A number of zealots going there, perhaps to test the waters, but I think that might have been a little bit of Miss Micro. Perhaps trying to get the army out of position for Cry, but Cry is being quite defensive here. He's going to uh, rally around that planetary fortress, drop mules on that... Uh, the gold minerals there and really just macro up best he can yeah time is going to activate a zonaga watchtower but not spot the two medevacs that are now making their way out there are a couple stalkers ready and, and ready and waiting to try to snipe down these two medevacs that are coming in we also are getting some um, additional pylons as well so we'll see whether or not this works it's going to be a two-prong attack the medevacs now coming in the stalker is going to be able to snipe down one medevac another medevac will get sniped down as well it looks like the stalkers are taking out additional units as there is another push at the gold mineral patch Force fields coming into play, and Cry is in a bit of trouble as he is unable to retreat. Beautiful play by Time. He was able to focus down those medevacs in the main, and now getting great uh, surround with those zealots and force fields as well, preventing Cry from getting uh, away here, and Time doing a beautiful job really reversing the uh, the fortunes here. He will be able to blink after these medevacs and take those down as well if he chooses. And now just applying some counter pressure and not many units left for Cry. Time really needs to get caught up here with his zealots and he might be able to break into the natural of Cry. He does not want to take on this planetary fortress. Getting a little bit of control issues there. Does not want to take those on with those zealots. But he could do some huge damage if he pushes into this natural. Yeah, level 3 weapons upgrade about to be completed, so that is going to be huge as his stalkers and his zealots are going to have a base 4 armor in addition to the sentries, actually. So the sentries are all going to have 4 armor, so any any damage from a Gauss Rifle is only going to be 3, 
even before Guardian Shield. So if a Guardian Shield goes up, the Marines are only dealing one damage each. And that is so much damage reduction. And I think that's really what time is, has been counting on. I don't know if Cry realizes how far up the, the weapon upgrade and the armor upgrade path time has gone. And you can see now additional sentries being warped in. And it looks like time going for another push. And it looks like it should be pretty successful as the armies are vastly in favor for time. Yeah, time does have a 3 3 now. And he's going up against 1 1 units. And he's got a huge force as well. So he's got the armage advantage, the upgrade advantage, but a nice uh, EMP going off there by a ghost. And it was able to take down a few of the sentries energy we will have some force fields still going up here he didn't get all the sentries and now time doing a ton of damage the sentries really need to focus down units here nice control by time at the moment and scv is being forced to be pulled off the line by vp cry again a number of force fields going up preventing the marines and the marauders from accessing the uh, stalkers here as they try to focus down these units one by one another blink coming in here more scv is being pulled by cry if we check the income counting station it is 69 to 47 at this point even if time is forced to retreat here already done huge economic damage and now we see scb is uh with no attack upgrades trying to take on the zealot that does have four armor not going to be doing a very good job and having to give the gg is vp cry time once again doing an all kill here as vvv gaming drops one game and then four in a row by time in very impressive fashion yeah just really well played by time i was concerned about time for a small amount of time but really, he just was able to catch all of those units, getting those 3-3 um, three, three upgrades, as we mentioned earlier, and being able to carry his team once more.